Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to this uh, webinar. I'm your host, Manuel Garcia, from the PNG Mexico Alumni Chapter, uh, which happens to be one of the most active international chapters. Uh, I'm here as a pinch hitter for one of our colleagues responsible of running the webinars. So if something goes wrong during the presentation, please uh, just have a little patience. And uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Perfect. So before we speak with Clay on today's topic, uh, we invite you to visit pngalums.com to learn about our local chapters. And uh, well, let's uh, intro, intro into Clay Vicentine. As you know, Clay is a specialist in great habits and efficiency. He holds a number of roles in the health and wellness space as founder and director of Total Health Organization, uh, former executive director and current board member of the nonprofit uh, Go Vibrant, and as a professional and personal trainer. Uh, with a decade of experience training and coaching individuals and groups on how to be and remain wholly well, Simplify to Amplify has become uh, Byzantine's cornerstone philosophy and training program. He also authored Shoebox Letters, Daughters to Dads. Uh, Clay has spent more than 17 years in sales and marketing at P&G and Catalina Marketing, and he is a graduate of Purdue University and he currently resides in Cincinnati. So without further ado, uh, let's enjoy Clay's presentation. So Clay, uh, let's see if this works. Uh, just give me one second here. So, let's go. All right, can you see? See and hear. Yes. All right. Great. Uh, good morning, everybody, uh, or wherever you are. Good morning, afternoon, evening. Um, thank you for spending your time with me this morning. We'll probably have about uh, between 30 and 40 minutes of content. And then beyond that and during that, uh, please feel free to ask questions. Um, it's a little bit easier, obviously, to do that in person, um, so we'll make do with what we have here. You've got um, maybe, hopefully, you can see a couple of options where you can chat um, and ask questions on your um, GoToMeeting screen, so if there's anything that we can uh, utilize that for, we will. Um, a little bit about me, a little bit of basic background. I uh, was at P&G from 2000 until 2013. I uh, had a number of different roles in IT. Uh, doing digital marketing, doing business analytics, and then also uh, spent some time in the marketing proper space. Uh, left Halloween of 2013, actually, was my last day, and uh, left and have been with Catalina Marketing for the last five years or so. Uh, but also, um, in the little time that I took to myself between P&G and Catalina, started my own company called Total Health Organization, and have been um, teaching and talking and coaching and mentoring about health and wellness ever since. Uh, very, very uh, personally passionate about the topic. So hopefully what you find today um, are some takeaways that you can immediately go and do something with. There is certainly theory in here that I'll talk about so that you can understand some of the practice behind um, what I'm referring to when I talk about some of the things I will talk about. But there are a lot of things in here that you can immediately go uh, do. You can go talk about, you can take away, um, and hopefully implement pretty quickly. So with that, we will go ahead and get started. Uh, the idea really behind Simplify to Amplify is this, um, and it's not rocket science, I admit that fully. The more you give extraordinary focused time and attention to the few truly important things in your life, the healthier and happier you will be. Again, that's not anything um, that's going to, um, to make you think that much differently um, about life in general. However, what I'll propose to all of you is that most of us don't exactly take the time to give extraordinary focus, time, and attention to only a few things in our lives. We end up on a daily basis in the midst of 
work, in the midst of possibly children, in the midst of parents, family, friends, uh, things that are outside of our control, a flat tire on our vehicle, anything like that. What I'm pushing, what I always push, is to give that extraordinary time and attention to only those few things that matter most. And those few things that matter most to one person are going to be very different, um, in some cases, very different uh, than what it would be for someone else. So we're going to get into how to define some of those. We're going to talk about how to basically simplify down to what those things are for each of you. And then we're going to talk about on the amplify side of things, thus the simplify to amplify, on the amplify side of things, how you bring those to life. What are some of the things that you can do immediately and for the long term um, to make sure that your time and energy and focus is given to those few important things? When I talk about this, you know, all of us are part of larger groups. So we're part of maybe our immediate family or our extended family. Maybe we're part of a faith family um, at whatever faith you're a part of. You're part of a work organization. All of those things are very, very important. However, you have to be grounded in certain things first before you can bring those certain things to a larger organization, either to lead that organization or to be a valuable member of that organization. Uh, Matthew Kelly, who has spoken time and time again um, to a number of different P&G groups, would always say you would never hire an accountant, hire someone as an accountant who couldn't balance their own checkbook. Same thing here. We want to make sure that you are grounded first as an individual, and then you can move your way into an organization and be the most valuable member of that organization that you can possibly be. So everything that I'm going to talk about in here today, you have the opportunity to be selfish. This is all about you, not necessarily about anybody else. So in that vein, I wanted to share a little bit about who I am really. So, you know, knowing my work history is one thing. Um, but this six-year period from 2007 to 2013 is basically what has defined me ongoing. And I like to talk about this in order to give you guys an example of the things that I talk about are not just theory. They are certainly practice. And they are practice, um, practice enough that it's helped me get to where I am today outside of some of these situations. Um, and this is not, um, I always put a disclaimer on this, this is not to compare these situations to anyone else's. Everybody has their own what I'll call dark periods. Um, this just happened to be mine and there were some great things that came out of it, but it took a lot of work and energy to make my way out of it. But once I did, I was enabled with some tools to help me along the way and that's what I wanna share with you guys today. So uh, I was on a path, uh, my wife and I were, um, we're on a path where we both graduated school at about the same time. We both got jobs. We both got married to each other. Uh, we moved into a new house. We um, had one child and then we had another child 16 months later and we were on a train that just did not seem like it was stopping. There wasn't a lot of energy and effort given to putting the brakes on, assessing where we were and then moving forward. Things just seemed like they were happening. And one of those things that seemed like it were just happening was at the beginning of 2017, my wife and I separated and we lived on two separate sides of Cincinnati at the time. I had two children. They were living with my wife full time and they were with me um, on weekends and on occasional weeknight, that kind of thing. Um, that was not something that I had planned on in my life. I think when most of us think about the time that we're going to spend with created family, uh, that it's going to be forever and it's going to be great. Um, and so this kind of hit me in the face a little bit. And then fast forward to the next summer, hit me in the face a little bit more because I became clinically depressed and uh, had to work through about a six to eight month period that I never thought that I would have to work through there either. Um, that was the lowest point of my life <clears throat> in the start of this time frame. So there was a lot that came out of that, not a ton that I'll share here, um, if we had more time, I'd get into a little bit deeper. However, at the end of 2009, we ended up putting our family back together. Um, we spent a total, uh, during these six years, a total of six years in counseling, my wife and I did, in order to be able not just to put the pieces back together for the two of us, but put the pieces together for the life that we really, really wanted. So we put our family back together in 2009. 
I then had P&G come to me. If any of you on the phone have experienced this with a, with a big company, P&G comes to me and says, hey, your job's going away. You've got 90 days in order to find a new one. And so at that point, um, I took 95 days, uh, found a new job inside of P&G. Um, I was sitting there going, I just spent three years of my life trying to put my life itself together, put my family back together, and now all of a sudden I was losing a job. But I did find on day 95 inside of P&G a new job and was there for about three, three and a half years. Was very grateful for that. Um, and then we had a family illness that hit um, that lasted about three or four months. My wife was hospitalized for a period of time and we had to deal with that. And then P&G um, was great for many, many reasons, but decided to move to a new career outside of P&G. That was exciting and great. And then something else happened. Um, inside the family. And then we ended up having um, our our third daughter um, at the time in 2013, um, and things have progressed from there. So I share that so that you understand that there, obviously for all of us, there's a lot that goes in our, on in our lives. However, as somebody who's going to stand up here and tell you about some things later about how you can change your lives, I certainly want you to know that those things are coming from a very real place that enabled me to get through this period of time. The swoosh up here and the way that these um, items are listed are for very specific reasons. We all have ups and downs in our lives. But the idea is to, to manage our lives through purpose, and we'll talk about that later, manage our lives through purpose such that we're on a continuum that goes up, goes from the bottom left to the top right, and we continue to go up. And the ups and the downs that we face three, four years from now, hopefully we can handle a lot better because of some of the tools and tactics and tips that we start putting in place in our lives right now. So today I'm pretty unapologetic about who I am. These are the things that I absolutely love. Donuts, I love donuts. I'm talking to you about health and wellness today, but I love a good donut and won't pass those up. Clearly family is very, very important to me. Sports and athletics um, and wellness is obviously something that's very important to me. Um, athletic shoes, um, I'm a sneakerhead to some degree. Um, so there are things that I absolutely love. I know what those are today. Those get the lion's share, if not pretty much all of my time today. And again, I'm to the point where it's unapologetic. I know it's important to me. I know it's important to the people around me. And I give that attention and energy to them for them. So hopefully that helps a little bit set the stage for this is real. Um, it's not just theory. So now what do we go and do? So let's focus on the simplify side here just for a couple of seconds. What I'd like each of you to do, and I'll give you about 60 to 90 seconds to actually do this. I'd like for you guys to, on a piece of paper, if you've got a piece of paper and pen with you, make a list of what I call your vitals. All those things, people, roles that you would classify as important in your life. It could be 10, it could be 12, 15 of them. I don't really care how many to start. And I just want you to jot those down real fast. You've got a couple of examples there on the screen. Student, you're a, a child, a daughter, or a son, you're an athlete, you're a reader, so on and so forth. You're an employee. All of those things may be important to you off the top of your head. So I'd like you to list all of those. Then I'd like you to narrow that list to your top five, those five most important. And then I want you to pick of those five, the top one. And that one thing is going to be something that if that's not right in your life, then it doesn't matter what numbers two through whatever else are doing at the time. You have to get number one right. You have to make sure that number one is whole. For me, number one on my list is my wife. Um, if something is, is just out of whack there, it doesn't matter what two through 10 are on my list. That one has to be right. And so we focus on that. We get that right. And then everything else can kind of fall into place. So I'm going to give everybody, let's go 90 seconds, make a list of as many vitals as you possibly can, and then narrow that to five, and then narrow that down to one. And then I will, line will be silent here, we'll be quiet, and then we'll come back on in about 90 seconds.
All right, we'll go about 30 more seconds. All right, I recognize that 90 seconds is not a ton of time. I might, instead of a, a longer session, give you guys a little bit more time, but most people typically know what those really important things are off the top of their head. Um, so in the spirit of using the webinar as best we can, um, inside of, if you can see a chat window, um, whether it's two, let's go, um, I have an option that says organizers and, and panelists. If you want to type inside the chat window, if you can, um, if you're willing to share what your top vital was, um, most of the time, the vitals end up in a couple of different categories. Their they're faith and family are typically the top two. Um, but if anybody wants to share, um, would love to see those and love to see those flow in um, to see if everybody kind of holds true to those or if there's any different ones in there um, that, uh, that are worthwhile seeing. All right, so let's move on uh, beyond the simplify side. Uh, let's move on to talk about the amplification side. So we've got a little bit of theory to start here, and then we move our way into the, the practical components of this. So we have what we call the elements of vitality, and these are the foundations of the amplification piece. You've heard probably in different incarnations talked about differently body, heart, mind, and soul pieces. And I focus on those here because all of those need to be working in concert for all of us to be as well as we possibly can. We can be very physically fit and that enables us to do some other things really well. But if we're not doing those other things really well, then, it, then obviously we're not wholly as well as we possibly could be. The interesting thing about the body, heart, mind, soul pieces and talking them in that order is that growth happens from the bottom up. We naturally grow and progress from the bottom up. So we start as we're born, we're physically here. Uh, we emote, uh, we cry as soon as we're born. So we know emotions for the first couple of years or the way that we know how to behave with the world. Beyond that, our mind gets stronger, starts to form a little bit more, our intellect becomes stronger. And then at some point, we're able to assess things on the soul side or the purpose side. So why am I here? What is really, really important to me? Some of the things that we're talking about here today real change that we want to happen in our lives for, I would venture to say, because I'm not perfectly uh, well, so to speak, or healthy, um, there's always room for improvement inside of this for me, just as there is for any of us. Uh, that's why hopefully you guys are on the phone today to make some kind of change in your life to be better. Uh, that change happens from the top down. So to the degree that we're able to answer those questions of what our purpose is, what's most important to us, then we can align the emotion piece, the intellect piece, and the body piece up with what's most important so that we can then drive that home. So growth happens from bottom up. It just happens as it happens, as it does in the world. But change, we can control for the most part. And we start at the very top by answering what's most important, what our purpose is, and then we drive that down through the others and make sure that the body, heart, and mind pieces are in alignment with whatever that uh, soul and purpose piece is. So we have four of those pieces, the body, heart, mind, and soul. I'm not going to get into excruciating detail on all of these, just given time elements today, but we'll hit on the, the very top lines of each of them so you guys understand some of the, the um, ideas behind each. If body is the foundation for um, the elements of vitality and nutrition is the foundation for body, then it means I'll talk a little bit more in detail about that one for sure today. So nutrition, breathing, exercise, and sleep in this order on the body side are how I break down conversation topics about being physically well. If you're not physically well, it's difficult to do those other three and fire on all cylinders with those other three. 
uh, the mind, heart, and soul pieces. So nutrition, you have to get your nutrition right to start. That enables you, hopefully, with a little bit of posture correction, um, for most of us, I still have to do it. I sit terribly when I sit at my desk every day, um, which is why I have a standing desk to help a little bit with that. Um, our breathing, our ability to breathe becomes a little bit easier because our body can do it kind of on its own a little bit better than it could otherwise. As we breathe better, that allows us to exercise better. better. Both, both kind of go hand in hand. But if we breathe better, our exercise and our physical wellness can become a little bit better with um, whether it's running or weights or resistance or flexibility training or any of the things that you would do in that space. And then as we exercise and our body is um, properly fueled for the day, then that enables us to sleep better. And sleep is not just a quantity thing. I don't talk about it in, in that perspective, from that perspective. I talk about sleep from a quality perspective. How quality is your sleep? I can take somebody whose sleep is only six hours a night, but is very, very quality, they will outlast somebody who gets eight to nine um, hours of sleep a night that isn't of quality every day of the week. So I said I'd talk a little bit about nutrition in more detail. So a couple of things that I'll mention that. One is just a quote, eat to live, don't live to eat. It's a very huge shift from thinking about food as something that can fuel you during the day, which is a, a little bit about how I view it now, versus I just love to eat. So there's certainly a difference between eat to live, don't live to eat. You can enjoy your food. I'm not saying, please don't think that I'm saying not to enjoy your food. However, your food can provide more than just taste satisfaction. Eat four to six times a day throughout the day. You guys have heard that, that's nothing it's nothing new, but it's a very real thing that allows your body to process over the course of the day um, and allows you to have enough energy over the course of the day, not just at particular times. You don't want to overfuel or underfuel yourself throughout the day. And then breakfast is by far the most important meal of the day. Just very quickly, think about when you go to bed and then when you wake up and the amount of time between your dinner the night before or maybe a snack right before bed and then when you have breakfast in the morning. Some people eat a 7 or 8 p.m. dinner and then don't eat breakfast at all and then don't eat again until lunch. Your body hasn't, while your body's asleep and it isn't expending a ton of energy, you still need energy when you wake up in the morning in order to start your day right. So breakfast is by far the most important meal of the day within about 45 minutes of waking up. And if you can get about 20 to 30 grams of protein in that breakfast, all of that is going to make it an ideal start to your day. Portion control. I talk about eating to a goal, not necessarily handfuls, not necessarily buying a certain size plate, any of that kind of stuff. Have a goal in mind with whatever meal it is that you're going to eat, whether it's a certain caloric goal, it could be a certain size goal. Um, you don't want to eat until you're completely stuffed, obviously. So that's not, that's not the goal that we're going for here. Um, but eat more to a goal, not necessarily, uh, oh, I need to only have two portions of this. And then lastly, liquids. Water is absolutely essential. Water does so much for our bodies. Um, please get enough water during the day. There's never been anything out there that says that 64 ounces of water is exactly what you need during the day. I know people, because of, um, of how their body works and maybe they're training for something, they need 120 ounces a day or 110 ounces a day. I know others that drink about 60 and they're perfectly fine. So use 64 as a guideline, but at, water is absolutely essential during the day. Let's move on to heart on the emotion piece. The baseline on this is empathy. How good are you at understanding others in their situations, in their shoes, and letting them know that they matter? How have, are you cultivating that muscle so that that is something um, that you are extremely good at that can then lead to number two, which is do you own your own emotions or do your emotions own you? Because ideally, we're letting our heart and our mind lead at the same time. This is the emotion piece, but it's that emotion and mind are a little bit intertwined. Um, we want to lead with both of those. And if you've stressed the empathy muscle, if you have understood um, another person and how they're feeling and not judging that other person for how they're doing inside of a situation, you're enabling them to get through whatever they're going through. That stresses that um, empathy muscle enough to where you can then, in your own space and with others, 
know whether you're allowing your emotions to control you or whether you're controlling your emotions. That allows you then to learn fast from situations and then move forward. Situations that I call hot stove moments. So a hot stove, if you end up touching the stove, your hand pulls back within milliseconds. You know very quickly that that was hot and I'm not doing that again. You learned very, very quickly. You understood what the ramifications were of touching that hot stove. You moved your hand back and you know that you're not going to do that again. A lot of times with emotions, they tend to hang. And if you go through, again, if I, there were, I always say if I didn't learn anything in six years of counseling, then, I, then um, there's a problem. A lot of what we would talk about in there um, was all emotion based and your ability to move through emotions to get to the next thing, to learn from it and get to that next thing is absolutely paramount to any of us being fully well. So our ability to empathize with others that allows us to be able to let our hearts and our minds lead at the same time without letting our emotions control us, allows you then to learn fast from whatever situation you're in with your emotions and move forward, not over it, but through it, to move through an emotional situation to get through whatever's on the other side of that. The mind piece um, and the intellect starts with focus. Now, this is usually where we would bring up the conversation about multitasking and how that is just a necessary evil in our lives. So, um, yes, it's necessary, but ideally we're focusing, we're choosing to focus on one thing, work on one thing or related things at the same time. Multitasking is when you take multiple things that are completely unrelated and do them at the same time. That's not what we're talking about here. The idea is to focus, to choose to work on one thing or related things at the same time. Difficult to do, I know, but something that we would love for all of us to get through. And that, that then allows for learning. So constant education, whether it's within relationships, parenting, industries and jobs, whether you love Sudoku puzzles, crossword puzzles, any of that kind of stuff, all of that constant education sets the stage for further achievement, which is obviously what we're all going for. And then on the soul side, Defining your purpose and having a purpose is key to driving your life via certain choices. I think we all kind of in our gut have an idea of what our purpose is. Some of us have written that down. Others haven't yet. So I would push each of you, if you don't already have a personal purpose that's set aside for you, think about what that is. Um, that then leads to questions about the team around you, whether it's family members or an organization. Do those people around you, whether the personal or professional, have similar purposes to yours? Because once you know yours, you'd love to associate them with people who think similarly on the purpose front, that you're driving toward the same goals in life. And then lastly, that allows you to then live it. And the question I'll pose to all of you, how are you living whatever your purpose is today, if you know what that is, and how resilient are you with it? Does your purpose waver? And if it does, then I might say, is that your real purpose? Or do you stand firm in whatever that purpose is for you? Uh, and that allows for the people around you, the choices that you make, to hold firm in that purpose as well. So those are the four big areas, body, heart, mind, soul. Now we'll talk a little bit about the application. I'm going to go, uh, I've got four slides here to talk a little bit about, in general, how we might apply. And then I've got some very tactical elements that I'll put forward for each of you. So one is applying it through interval living. Most of you have heard about interval training where you're pushing yourself really hard inside of a gym on one particular exercise and then you take a short break and then you push yourself really hard on the next exercise and then you take a short break and you continue with that for 30, 45 minutes. My ask here is to do the same thing but on the life side. Push yourself really hard inside of a conversation, let's say with your significant other and then take a purposeful break after that. Push yourself very hard at work on a particular project and then plan some time away from work, whether it's 15 or 30 minutes after that project or whether it's a day or vacation, whatever it needs to be. We're talking about planned breaks here that allow you to build up your energy again to go tackle what's next. Consistency. We want to turn habits into ritual. A habit is something like I just put my pants on right leg first, and then left leg second. It doesn't really matter why, it just happens. A ritual is I read a story every night to my four-year-old because it creates a bond between me and my four-year-old. That's a ritual, and that's the difference. A ritual is connected 
to a higher purpose. So what we want to do is take a very limited amount of willpower that each of us has, put some real, real remarkable energy toward it, and then turn that into a ritual, and then go back to that willpower and say, okay, what's next? It's very hard to say, I want to change up how I'm going to eat. I want to change up the relationship with my significant other. I want to change up how I exercise to do all that stuff at once. You're probably, I would fail if I did that. Most of us probably would because it's too much to tackle. So ideally, we're taking the limited willpower we have. We're pushing forward hard with that. We're creating rituals from it. And then we're using that willpower for the next thing. Be intentional with what you're doing. Um, and this is something that I have to continually remind myself of, write notes to myself about being intentional and how I'm going to do this. I put the picture up here of a nice vacation spot because something I read one time um, from an individual really stuck with me about how he takes vacations throughout a year. He takes one set time away for himself uh, to reground himself on whatever is important to him. He takes one vacation that's just with him and his significant other so that they can connect and be well with each other. He takes one with his immediate family throughout the year so that they have time together. And then he takes one with his extended family throughout the year. Very intentional time away and vacation planning to, but with purpose, with absolute purpose. I say that same thing to you guys. What's the why behind what you're doing? He certainly had a why behind how he was taking his vacation throughout the year. What's the why behind what you're doing on a daily basis? And then application through focus. So I talked about focus before on the mind side. This is a focus on what you want, not what you want to get rid of inside of making some changes. So the water and the soda that you see here, um, there's a, a certain soda type that's written on the glass that we've blacked out here. Um, but if you're trying to change, trying to get empty calories out of your diet, saying I would like to drink more water feels very different than I need to stop or I need to quit drinking diet soda or soda. There's a nuance between those two that hopefully you can hear. So as you're making your way through changes, focus on that that you want and make statements about that that you're trying to move toward rather than focusing on those things that you want to get rid of. So let's talk about in those four areas some very specific tactical elements that you guys can go out and do today. And I think most of these, I'd say most of them, um, should be pretty self-explanatory and changes that you can make pretty easily. So first, most of us eat fruits. So if we stay on the nutrition side, most of us eat fruits. Ideally, we're staying with low sugar, high fiber fruits. Eating fruit is not bad, not bad by any stretch. People talk about sugar all the time. Inside of fruits, your body knows what to do with that sugar more so than it knows what to do. Um, with the sugar that's coming inside of a dessert or a pastry, for example. However, there are fruits that are better than others. And the berry family that you see here on the screen, your strawberries, blackberries, blueberries, raspberries, are low, low in sugar, very low in sugar, and very high in fiber. If we're going to stick with any kind of fruits, let's start with those, um, if those are fruits that you can enjoy. There are smart incremental swaps that we can make in some of the choices that we all probably make today. So instead of a smoothie, um, which tops out probably around the 80 grams of sugar um, uh, mark, something like a homemade protein shake that probably has in between 8 and 10 grams of sugar is probably a pretty good exchange to make. If you love Curito, if you love the Chipotle, if you love any of the burrito type places, Swapping the wrapped version for the burrito bowl version will save on carbs, save on calories, save on some unnecessary elements that you really just don't need. And something like a candy bar. Dark chocolate uh, is, uh, for many reasons, is much, much better for you than a candy bar. You'll see the sugar swap here, 24 grams of sugar inside of a small candy bar for 4 grams of sugar inside of dark chocolate. The taste on all of these should be close to the same. Um, however, your body's going to feel a real difference with a decrease in carbs, a decrease in calories, and a decrease in sugar that you would see from some simple swaps here. Um, these all come from a friend of mine online um, on Instagram. You can catch her at uh, Meow Mix is her, uh, is her handle, M-E-O-W-M-E-I-X. 
So on the physical side, you guys have probably heard 10,000 steps a day, five miles, which is about five miles a day. All that really is trying to instill in everyone is to move, simply to move. There's a huge difference between this and, uh, you know, my Fitbit will tell me that if I've sat at the office all day, I will probably get a total of about 3,000 steps. If I'm up, I'm moving around, I use my standing desk, I work out, I'll get my 10,000 steps in during the day. So all this is doing is telling you to please move because a body in motion is going to tend to stay in motion and a body at rest is going to tend to stay at rest. Um, so this is a very good benchmark to use. It's about five miles during the day, but the idea is simply to move, to get up and move. If you're at 8,000 steps a day, that's great. Try to get 8,500 the next or 8,500 the next week, whatever it happens to be. But again, the idea is to move and to make cardio, if I focus on cardio for a second, as fun as possible. I can't stand running on a treadmill. That is not my favorite thing to do. Uh, that is very it's excruciatingly boring to me. Um, and so I try not to do that. I love basketball. And so I try to get my cardio element from a basketball court, something that I love to do, but is still giving me the benefit of the cardio exercise. So I'd ask each of you to think about inside of your own exercise routine, or if you're going to start one, what are those things that are more fun for you rather than uh, thinking about, oh man, I have to, I have to run on a treadmill or something along those lines. Running is great for some people. It works. And I'm so happy that it does. Um, cardio for me though, on the basketball court is a lot more fun. It's going to get me to do it. Stretching for all of us as we get a little bit older is absolutely critical. I'd ask five minutes of stretching a day from you guys. Hopefully it's after you've moved a little bit. We don't want to stretch very, very ice cold and tight muscles. Um, but stretching is going to allow for more balance during the day. And the more balanced you are, the better you can move. Um, so ideally, um, when we're starting, five minutes of stretching a day, I try to get about 10 to 12 minutes in during my exercise routines to keep me loose during that routine. But again, mostly for balance, balance during the day. It's going to allow your posture to be better, allow your breathing to be better, and then obviously at the end, allow all of you to physically be better. Let's move to the emotion side for a second. The one or two vitals that you wrote down earlier, let's take those and put those as pictures in our wallet. Let's take those and put those as backgrounds or screensavers in our phones. Um, I have a picture of my kids on my phone. If I'm stuck inside of a, you know, for those of us that still actually go to a grocery store every now and then, um, if I'm in a long line in a grocery store, I can pull my phone out and look at the picture of my kids and that immediately calms me. Um, having those, whatever those one and two things are close to you on a daily basis will allow you to reground yourself as days get kind of crazy, which they always happen to do. If we could do it, let's take those vitals and have one core thing that we know that we want to do with those vitals each day. So let's say that faith is one of those vitals. What are you going to do even for just five minutes during a particular day against that faith element? If your family is one of those vitals, what are five, what's five minutes or 10 minutes that you're going to devote to your family that day that's just going to be time for them and whatever else is on your top five. If we focus on, on writing those down and carrying through whatever those activities are, that can then become a ritual for us so that every day you know that you're going to hit on something for each of those vitals. Let's make purpose a thing. So what do I mean by that? It's not just having a purpose statement. It's maybe typing part of that statement as, a, as an email password or a password that you use on a consistent basis so that it's a constant reminder to you, so that it, you're always typing it out, you're, it's always close to your best. Creating a, something like a purpose statement can be something that sounds great in theory, but that maybe doesn't get practiced. Well, if you're constantly typing it or constantly thinking about it, hopefully it becomes more than just theory. So let's take what's important to you. It could be your purpose or it could be something else that's important to you. Maybe create that as a password or something else that on a daily basis is going to, a little bit like your phone in your wallet, it's going to constantly remind you of what that is and why it's important. And then for all of this, let's track it and write it down. 
Um, so the degree that you can use an Apple Watch, a Fitbit, or anything along those lines to help track your activity during a day, do it. Write down your activity if you can't use one of these devices. Um, what did you have for lunch today? Did you have any snacks today? Physically writing it down and having it look back at you from the paper is always an amazing way to get uh, instant feedback from what you're doing. So I would stress as much as we, as any of us can to track and write down those things that we want to change, uh, that are purpose-filled, uh, that we're going after, whether it's in the exercise space, the eating space, the intellectual space, trying to further our education, whatever it happens to be. Let's track what we're doing and write it down, track against that progress, because when you can go back and look at what you've done before and where you are today, because we're moving upward, it's an ama that piece of feedback is absolutely amazing. All right, so again, I'm gonna give you guys uh, about 60 seconds, maybe another 90 seconds um, as we near the end here to do something that I call remarkable list. You can see the definition up here of remarkable, worthy of being or likely to be noticed, especially as being uncommon or extraordinary. Most of us, especially as PNGs kind of drilled into most of us, we're not here to be okay, we're not here to be average. We're here to do something great or do something remarkable. That's the word that I choose to use here. So what I'd like each of you to do on that same piece of paper where you had some of your vitals jotted down, write what your top vital is, and then write one way in the next 24 hours that you're gonna be remarkable with, with that. Whatever that happens to be, I don't care what it is, how big it is or how small it is. So here's an example that I would tend to use. Someone um, in a class that I taught a long time ago had running as, a, as something that was one of their vitals, and they wanted to run um, in the Boston Marathon or the New York Marathon. One of the things they could do in the next 24 hours is simply know the qualifying times to get in there and when the races are. That could be the next step that you do within the next 24 hours in that example. So I don't care how big or small it is. It's not running the marathon tomorrow. But what can you do in the next 24 hours that you think will help you be remarkable with whatever that vital is? And then I want you to write whether it's related mostly to body, heart, mind, or soul. If you do that on a couple of these, because I'd like you to do that for your other four beyond uh, the class here today. Um, but as you do that, you can see if you're, okay, I've got a lot of goals as they relate to body, but I don't have very many that relate to the purpose side of things or maybe the mind side of things. Or I'm very heavy on the purpose. I've got a lot, I have a lot of good theory here, but how are we then going to put that into practice? So it may show you some things where balance maybe isn't necessarily inside of some of the vitals that you've written down. So I'll give you guys about 60 seconds or so. Write your top vital. Write how you'll be remarkable with that vital in the next 24 hours, and then write how it's body, heart, mind, or soul related next to that. All right, I'll give you a couple of seconds to do that. All right, as you guys are writing, I'm just gonna proceed forward just a little bit so we can leave some time if anybody's got any questions. So a poll question for everybody, what would you take? Would you take $3 million today if I offered it to you? Or would you take a penny a day that doubled each day for a month? And this, I promise you, this has um, application to what we're talking about here. So on this next slide, we're gonna see how everything adds up. So if you took $3 million a day today, you know how much that is. So let's do the penny exercise and see how much a penny would add up to at the end of a 31-day month. So we're now two weeks through the month, and we're at about 82 bucks. So it's not looking so hot for anybody who would have taken the penny. Three weeks in, we're at $10,000. Not so bad, but still not a ton, not anywhere close to $3 million. All right, so we get through 29 days and we're 2.6 million. So obviously we're all smart people. We know where this is going to go. You're going to end up with about 10.7 million at the end of the month. The idea behind the compound effect is as you guys are trying to make changes in this health and wellness space and trying to be 
healthier just in general, not just with your body, but mind, heart, and soul as well. None of this stuff happens overnight. It takes a little time. And I wish I could tell you that it was going to happen on like day 10, that you were going to get an aha moment and things were going to change, or that it would be on day 31 like it is here. We just don't know when it's going to take hold. However, this exercise is meant to stress that as you continue taking those, that 5% of the willpower that you have and turn and creating amazing rituals from that, and you keep doing that as it's driven by your purpose and you continue to be healthy on the body side so that you can go do some of those amazingly great things that you want to go and do, the time will come. That time will hit, whether it's day 29, day 30 in this case, where you're above the 3 million mark, whether it is day 10. It might be day 10. Who knows? Um, but I stress that with all of you, that as you're making changes, while we don't necessarily know the time frame when things are going to hit, I didn't know that it was going to be three years separated from my wife during that time period and the energy and the effort that it was going to take to put that family back together. But it finally happened um, because we knew we were fighting for the right cause. It was very purpose driven between the two of us. Whatever that is for you, give yourself the time on it. So that's why I say here, remember to, in these two spaces, give yourself time to self-reflect and be great. Know that the time is there for you. And then remember to honor the energy that you've given to this. Don't cheat yourself. If you've given even just this hour of time to listening to what I'm talking about here, don't cheat yourself with that. You've written down some things that are very important to you. Nobody else has told you those things are important. You have said those are important. Take those and do something with them. Don't allow them to just sit, honor the fact that you spent some time today focusing on those and make sure that tomorrow or the next day or later, later on today, who knows, um, that you continue to give time and energy to that because obviously it's toward those things that you have said are most important to you. My contact information is on here. Contact information will be uh, posted as they post the, um, the presentation at a later date. Um, I do these in webinar situations, I will I'll do these in three hour um, in-person sit down situations. I do one to one coaching and mentoring, all of that stuff. So um, if anything that I've talked about here is helpful today, if there's any follow up any of you would like to do on a one to one basis, please feel free to contact me. Clay is the website or Clay at TotalHealthOrganization.com uh, is the email address. Please feel free to reach out at any time. And I'm in the alumni directory. Uh, for the for the PNG alumni as well. So with that, I will thank um, all of you for your time and attention on the phone. Um, if anybody has any questions, if we can get those through Manuel, that would be great. Um, I'll let you uh, tell me that, um, and then if not, we'll um, then we'll end here. Okay, Clay. Well, we want to thank you very much for your presentation, and for all of you guys to join us. So is there any question here? I'm uh, here reading the panel, so none so far. So if you want to write something down, please, uh, please do so. Nothing so far. So Clay, I have a question for you. Sure. Yeah, uh, you talk about the purpose, you talk about nutrition. However, you mentioned donuts as one of your uh, guilty pleasures. Uh, could you expand on that? I mean, do, uh, do we, can we allow ourselves to have some of those uh, pleasures and, and, and breaks during the day or during our month uh, that, well, it's uh, do not... Uh, uh, are fully aligned with what we are doing right now? What's your uh, take on that? Yeah, so my take is if you exclude all of the, um, if you exclude all of the fun in life, uh, it becomes very difficult to live. And using the word live um, unto itself uh, connotes that you're actually um, going and doing, you're going and doing. And uh, as much as I, control 90% of what I eat, for example, in a very strict way, if that other 10% wasn't things like donuts or a little bit of ice cream or cake mm -hmm. or a candy bar, things like that, um, it, I, there just would be no fun in that at all. 
Um, you 90, 10 is what I choose as the percentage break on there about there. Um, mm -hmm. 80, 20 is probably the, the furthest down we would want to go. But I, you know, what I try to teach my kids is um, with anything, whether it's academics, whether it's nutrition, whether it's working out, whether it's something else, if there's not fun in any of that, it's going to be very hard to live. And we're here to live. So eating donuts, I always, I throw it out there because it usually catches people off guard. Um, mm. I don't eat donut a day. That's not what I do. Um, I have a donut with my normal breakfast on Saturday morning and Sunday morning because the kids enjoy it with me. It's time for the, for me and them to kind of hang out over donuts in the morning, but I will also eat my normal breakfast with it so that it's not one big sugary thing that's going in me at the same at one time. Um, so I will stress to everybody to live. Part of your purpose needs to be to live and enjoy what we're doing. Um, part of that for me is having donuts. For somebody else, it's going to be another guilty pleasure, whatever that happens to be. Um, but that has to be in our lives in order for us to be well. We have to feed that part of our soul. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we have not received any questions so far. However, Miles Mendoza uh, mentions if we can get a copy of the webinar handout. So the slides will end up, um, all of the slides from all of the webinars end up going up online. Um, I don't know how quickly they end up going online, but this whole session is recorded. And so that definitely does go up. However, if you would want a copy of these um, quickly, immediately, like even today, if you want to send me an email at clay at totalhealthorganization.com, I'll certainly send them back to you. Perfect. Well, Clay, again, thank you very much for the presentation. And uh, for all of you guys, uh, please join us next month for our next webinar scheduled for December 11th on the subject of global diversity. So until then, uh, as I tell all my kids, uh, be good, enjoy, and have fun. So again, thank you very much, Clay. Thank you, everyone, and have a good day, good evening, good night. Thank you. You guys too. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.